one, two, just making sure you can hear my voice and my guitar okay. Hey, this is Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. What I want to help you with today is a problem that I get a lot of people that come up to me asking me about all the time, which is how do I break out of a rut, or how do I... How do I make my solos sound more like solos and less like scales? Or how do I keep myself from getting bored all the time because I'm playing the same things over and over and over? And there's a lot of different ways to approach this, but one thing that I think is really important is learning how to see more of your fretboard as one continuous flow of movement versus you know, just, just a position or a box, we call it, just one place on the guitar, or maybe we've got one here and one down here or something like that, and it really prohibits us from being able to move across the guitar. So that's what I want to help you with a little bit today. So it doesn't matter whether you are practicing pentatonic or you're practicing diatonic, you know, whatever scale it is, any scale is able to be viewed across the entire fretboard, okay? It just takes a little time. Now, this isn't the the only thing, obviously learning to better your technique and better your understanding through theory and you know, learning licks and patterns and all these things are really great things to learn how to do. But I think learning to have more freedom across your fretboard is a really great thing to build your confidence and build your creativity because it gives you something else. Okay, When I first started learning how to play, uh, you know, I'll refer to this as my first position. I'm going to go up to the 12th fret, which is E minor pentatonic or G major pentatonic, depending on how you're looking at this. And I learned how to play this, which I'm sure most of you know. And it took me a long time to learn to get out of that one position. I would just play everything there every time, or if I was in the key of A, I would move it down to the fifth fret or whatever. And so I developed patterns and I developed, you know, licks. I would play all those sort of Paul Gilbert sorts of things or some sort of repetitive lick that I've learned, you know, whatever it might be. But I was stuck there all the time and, and I didn't know how to get out of there. And even when I was shown how I could learn these other positions, it just seemed like I was, I don't know if I was too lazy or what the deal was, but I, I just wouldn't learn them. So what I want to tell you today is it's really important to break out of that for, even if it's not for somebody else, even if you only play, you know, by yourself or whatever, just the fun that you can have of being able to play more this way across the fretboard as opposed to kind of wearing blinders and just playing up and down uh, in one position. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with pentatonic and then I'm going to show you a little bit in diatonic as well just to kind of make a comparison here. But let's say that you're trying to learn how to solo, right? You're learning some, some stuff about scales and you know some licks and different things like that. And again, you know, E minor is being played, so you're trying to target the note E or the third, which is G or whatever it might be. But we're trying to find something a little more interesting to do here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this right here. And let's just break down what I'm playing right now. I'm playing the notes E, G, A, B, and D. So penta meaning five, I'm playing five different notes. And then I'm playing those five notes again in the next octave. And then I'm going to play again, but I only have two more notes left, and I run out of strings. So I'm playing the same notes over and over and over in different octaves. You know, we learn this whole thing here as one position, which is great. But understand that what you're really doing is you're playing multiple octaves of the same notes. So what we want to do is we want to learn the easiest way to begin with. Again, learning your theory and understanding things is very important, but I always think it's more important to learn how to have fun and get creative first and then learn the whys and the hows and, and different things like that. So let's take that, that position that we're playing right now and I'm going to refer to this as the first position. Now, it's okay if you think of it as something else, but it's the first position that we're learning how to play here off of the note E. Now again, we could be in E minor pentatonic or we could also be in G major pentatonic because they both have the same notes. But what we want to do is find somewhere else on the guitar to move so we're not just stuck in this one position here. So if we think about the notes, and I don't want you to worry too much about the names, I just want you to see how this actually works. I'm playing E again, E, G, A, B, and D, and then E, G, A, B, D, and then E, G, and then I round the strings again. Again, thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. 
um, hopefully I'll be able to help you with this a little bit. So by the time we're done, you can grab your guitar and start trying something new, something a little bit fresh. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take those same notes, but we're going to move that direction and we're going to play the same notes. So I'm going to move down to the note D. Okay. I already played D up in here, right? I had A, G, A, B, D. So I'm just moving down to a lower octave D here at the, the 10th fret of the sixth string. Okay. And I'm going to play this shape. Let me show you the shape first, and then let's talk about what the notes are real quick. So I'm going to play 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 9, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. So I'm playing 10, 12 twice, 9, 12 twice, and then 10, 12 twice again. So it's a fairly symmetrical shape that, that's fairly easy to play. Again, I'd probably, if I was playing an E minor pentatonic, I'd want to know where my E's are so I can try and target those among other notes that I can learn and things like that. But what I want you to hear now is that when I play this, if I play those notes down here in this new position, which I'm going to call the fifth position, because in pentatonic, if I took all five of my pentatonic notes and stuck them all on the sixth string, I could actually create a new shape on each one of those notes. So again, don't worry about the, the title, the position titles, but just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'm playing. So I'm gonna go down here and I start on D, but if I start here, notice how I'm playing the same notes. So it looks different, but it sounds the same. Okay, the only difference is as, as I move down or as I move up the guitar, I can't keep starting on E every time. Obviously, I have to start on something else, which is why, again, what I really could do is take the E and the G and the A and the B and the D, and I could put them all on the sixth string and then learn to build downward from there. Now, the most important thing is, is once you've learned how to do that, let's say you know that first position of E minor pentatonic right here, and now you're learning this new position, which I'm calling the fifth position, but it doesn't matter. I learned this new position that's starting at the 10th fret, but it's the same notes over and over and over, right? So I'm playing E's and G's and A's and B's and D's. And that's what I really want you to start thinking about isn't the fact that you're learning this second, this new position, so to speak, which is important but it's really learning how to visualize how this new position and that other position that you knew are connecting together to give you this freedom to be able to move around the fretboard. This is where sliding and all these different things become really important because we can start getting more creative with our movements through these two positions, or we can even connect the two positions together. create new licks or new patterns or new ideas. Okay. So what I like about learning these other positions is it gives me the freedom to approach my fretboard in a different way. Okay. I've got all these other places that I can go and there's other ways that I can get there, right? I might move, I might slide and just the, again, the creative process, I'm not playing anything new. I'm playing the same notes, but because I'm able to visualize the fretboard this way, it's giving me some more ideas or approaches to things that maybe I, I haven't done before. So as we keep learning these positions, and I'm just going to go through these first two for you right now, but as you keep learning these, you the availability of being able to move around wherever it is you'd like to go and then when you get into that let's call it the home position right this this main place then you've got all these cool licks that you can do but instead of just playing all those licks all at once and then you're out of ideas maybe you use the fretboard more this way and then when you need something really cool that you've already established you go back to that position or maybe you start learning some licks in some of those other positions. So as you're moving around, um, you can get into that position and come up with some things that you've, you've practiced there as well. 
I try and teach people a, a technique called meandering. And basically what meandering is, is setting a metronome or using a, a backing track or whatever it is at a particular tempo and learning how to move without stopping. Okay, now this isn't a, necessarily a musical technique. It's just a practice technique to see how well you actually know your fretboard. So let's say, for instance, I set a metronome and my practice was at this speed. So what meandering says is I'm going to move around at that tempo or at that speed and I can't stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep moving as long as I can before my hands freeze or my brain freezes up and I can't come up with anything. If, if it happens a lot, it means I'm probably moving too fast, right? If I have to stop a lot, then I need to slow my metronome down or my jam track or whatever it is I'm using. So you want to find a comfortable speed. This isn't necessarily just practicing each position, which is really important. This is trying to learn how to move in and out of the positions that you have been practicing to see the possibility of getting creative with them. So let's say, again, I'll say I'm right here. Now you can see, again, it doesn't really sound musical at this point, but what it is showing me is, am I able to move through the positions that I've learned comfortably at that tempo. So that way, if I come across an actual song that I'm playing and the song starts and it's doing something like this, okay, I can get in there. And I can start learning how to move around with more rhythm, more phrasing, all these different things that can happen. But that wouldn't have even been possible if I hadn't left this, this primary or home or first position, whatever we want to call it. So I really want you to start thinking about how important this could be to your playing. Now, again, I mentioned earlier that pentatonic, be, being that there's five notes, I could put all five of those notes on the sixth string and then build positions from each one. But I don't just want to practice playing up and down each one of these positions which is important, okay? I also want to learn to practice this way. So I've got this musical freedom or creativity to be able to move across the guitar and make things up this way, okay? So there's lots of different ways that you can practice this. But here's my point. It's not all or nothing. Like I always meet players that think, well, I, I, you know, I can't jam with other people or I can't get together with other people until I learn everything perfectly. I don't know that you ever learn everything perfectly. I think this this journey, this guitar thing just goes on forever for all of us, okay? It's just some of us have more of a comfort zone that feels good to us and we do what we do um, as best we can in there, but we're always learning. We're always learning something else. So even if you only started with two positions and you just learned how to develop those, and then maybe the week after you learn how to play, you know, another position that connects to that. So now you've got more stuff or the month after or whatever it might be. Because once you learn these positions, obviously it's nice to know where some notes are so you can try and target notes that you're playing when, you know, if a particular chord is being played, you're trying to target the root or the third or the fifth or whatever it might be uh, to make your solo sound a little more musical and give them melody, right? But that's another level on top of this, but that's certainly something that you could do or you can learn, like I said before, licks or patterns or things like that. So hopefully that sort of makes sense to you. Learning how to play each one moving up and down is very important from a technical standpoint. But from a creative standpoint, it's also important to learn how to see how they connect together congruently this direction so you can have some fun. So as you're learning this and as you're jamming with a jam track, don't worry so much about how fast you can play. Let that come later. Right now, just try and learn how to, how to get more creative with your movements. <laughs> kind of move around the fretboard and just enjoy some of those movements. And again, once you get comfortable with that, move to another position, learn another one and keep going. So again, so I don't waste your time. Let's go ahead and look at diatonic real quick. What we're going to do is just use G major, E minor, depending on how you want to look at it. And I'm going to move down here to the third fret. So what I'm going to be doing is playing this position right here. It's called a spread fingering and it looks like this. So what I'm 
doing here is playing the notes of the G major scale. I'm playing G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, and then it starts all over. G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and then I run out of strings. But again, same principle. I could learn another position, and it would enable me to move across the guitar. So if we wanted to call this position that I just played the first position, and if you don't know it, don't sweat it. I just, I just want to show you this in case this is where you are in your playing. So I could move to the second note, which is A, and play the exact same notes again, but I'm simply starting on A. So I'm playing A, B, C, D, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and then I've got D. Now, the bigger picture here is with these two positions, instead of just playing up and down each one, which is important, no doubt about it, but I could start moving around the fretboard, combining these two, And as I get comfortable with that, I learn another position and another position and that sort of thing. And what it really does is it just opens up my availability. Of being able to move around wherever I want to go. So if I hear the sound of a chord, like a G, I can think. And then if E minor comes up. D, you know, whatever it might be. Back to G or whatever it might be. It gives me this larger palette to work from to get more creative, which hopefully will sound better to whoever's listening to me. But more importantly, it's going to be more exciting for me as a player because I'm not just doing the same thing. I'm not just going up and down over and over and over. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a, needless to say, there's a million wonderful things that you can do in one position. I'm just saying, if you haven't really explored the fretboard moving across this way, I strongly recommend that you start learning how to do that just a little bit. Again, don't, don't adopt the all or nothing attitude where you have to develop all seven positions of diatonic or all five positions, or you have to learn every, you know, scale in every key. Just start with something that, that's kind of in your wheelhouse at this point. What keys do you play and what scales are you learning and how could you take just that idea and start spanning it out across the fretboard a little bit more to um, have some fun and get more creative. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you click the subscribe button so you're always notified when I have new videos. And if you need help choosing a guitar course that's perfect for you, make sure that you click the Help Me Choose link in the description.